We are in the tiny French settlement of Akaroa on the Banks Peninsula for round four of the State New Zealand Ocean Swim Series, Le Grand Swim. Round three of the State New Zealand Ocean Swim Series was the Capital Classic, and the weather certainly did deliver. Water conditions were great, more than 850 competitors taking part. In the men's and women's elite races, it was very much a New Zealand affair, with a number of the Australians deciding to miss this particular race. Kane Radford was looking for revenge, and he would end up winning the men's race comfortably, his first win of the series. On the women's side, Charlotte Webby out of Taranaki came in here, probably ranked number two behind New Zealand's leading swimmer Cara Baker, but she would cause the upset in the dominant display. Well, from one beautiful location to another, Akaroa, the tiny French settlement in Banks Peninsula, plays host to round four beautiful conditions. The temperature's up. Looking forward to this one. I love ocean swimming. So swimming a 1,000 metres today, how difficult is that going to be? Um, it shouldn't be too hard seeing I did it last year, but it will be a challenge, I think. What do you really love most about the ocean swim? Um, well, coming in at the end with the finish line, that's pretty cool. So I'm better on distance and Anna's better out in the sea, so we figured together we'll be all right. <laughs> Sizes? They just head into just make the final race for you isn't it because if you can win this you've got maximum points going into the last run the king of the bays it definitely is and that's the goal here today is to come out with maximum points and then can somewhat take uh, not have to worry about the mountain then just have to worry about king of the bays as the last one as it could be the double points so your big competition today who do you see as your big competition it's definitely the two australians and philip ryan out there you know it should be a really good race between all four of us and how's your shoulder you've had a bit of a niggle lately yeah, it's not too bad, you know, it's something that you just have to work through and that's part, part of sport, there's always something, you can, there's always going to be problems, so hey, it's just got to work through it. Well Mel, lovely to see you back in New Zealand to defend your title, you're here at Akaroa today, how are you feeling, what's your, what's your strategy for today's race? Thank you, I'm really excited to be back in New Zealand, um, such a beautiful town here, so looking forward to having a swim, but a little bit nervous at the same time, um, the last couple of weeks I've just been doing a lot of rehab for my shoulder, um, hasn't really been in top shape leading into this race, but um, looking forward to getting back in the water and having a good hit out and seeing where I'm at, I'm at before I get back into a, a lot of hard training. Now you're the obvious favourite for the race, so what does that do for you psychologically? I try not to really think about stuff like that. I just get in there and swim my own race. Um, we've got Charlotte Webby, the series leader. She's here today as well. So it'll be good to have a race against her and, yeah, just see where I'm at. Righto, Charlotte, series leader. How does that tag sit with you uh, heading into this race today? Um, it's good to be the series leader, but obviously it will come down to the last race. So I'm not really thinking of that. I'm just going out, going to swim my own race and hope hope that things go to plan. Yeah, well, you've got a good competitor today, haven't you, Mel Gorman? Tell me what you uh, what you think of her. Definitely, Mel's a double-time Olympian, so, of course, there's, she's amazing. She's world-class. We've also got Grace, so it will be a tough field, but, you know, there's nothing on this one for me. I, it, I just need to swim hard, and it doesn't really matter to my points table of where I get, so I guess that, that makes a little less pressure, I guess. I guess, though, you could take points off them. I guess that's the one, one thing you could achieve, though, right? Yeah, ideally, I'd love to take points off them or even just have a Kiwi win it. But, um, but like, I, I don't really want to stress myself out about it. Like, I just think I swim better if I'm just relaxed, having fun. Just hope that I get the boys right again. <laughs> Serious leader heading into the race, Phil. Uh, tell me how you're feeling just before the start here. I'm oh, feeling pretty good. Um, just want to go out hard and just see what happens today. Hopefully can get up there and get some more points on the other swims. So see how it goes. How's your shoulder? Uh, it's been up and down, but I think it should hold up today. 2.8 k's. It's, uh, conditions not looking too bad for you? Oh, I'd like it to be a bit choppier. And now having a look at today's course here in Akaroa. Just under 600 competitors swimming the 2.8 kilometres. It is a triangular swim with the competitors starting in French Bay. 1,400 metres out to the turnaround, 1,400 metres back in, finishing at Jubilee Park.
And now our elite competitors, our age group competitors, going through their final warm-up protocols. This should be a very good race. A great crowd beginning to gather. It is 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and this is a very good men's and women's elite field. Kane Radford, Josh Richardson out of Australia, Philip Ryan and Michael Scheel, the second of the Aussies. And the race in the women's should be between Melissa Gorman and Charlotte Webby. Joining me in commentary, former national swimming representative Scott Rice. It's going to be a very interesting race, this one, Mark. So the elite starting before the masses before the recreation on age group swimmers just to give themselves uh, well a chance for everyone else to see the lead swimmers in the event and get them away nice and cleanly and away they go Radford very long wade gets into his dolphin dive early looks to have already almost a body length lead over the rest of the field a really really good start by Radford here yeah, Kane Radford, he did the same thing in round three in Wellington. He decided to get off the line very quickly, and that day he was effective in gapping Philip Ryan. But Josh Richardson ranked fourth in Australia in the 10K. He comes here as a bit of an unknown quantity. I'm not sure that will necessarily be in his favour or not, because how much does he know about the New Zealand swimmers? The real question for me is, Melissa Gorman, the two-time Olympian, the world champion from 2009, does she have the ability to mix it up with our elite men? Well, that is, yeah. I mean, she has had a couple of weeks uh, out of the water with a, a bit of a shoulder injury, so it will be interesting. But this is just a classic case of great entry and, and you know, really putting the head down in that first 500 metres. Radford had the lead after the dolphin diving and the wading and, and such an important part. And in comes the first age group recreational wave in the red caps and their speed seeded uh, for three waves following this one. And so these guys hoping to probably try and catch that elite group if they can. Well there's always the age group swimmers that do manage to swim their way up, some outstanding swimmers right across this series too and it is nice that it is seeded so that athletes can I guess uh, plan their race around athletes of a similar sort of ability but up the front in the green cap it is Kane Radford who has a narrow margin at the moment over Philip Ryan who is wearing the yellow series leaders cap and in the pink cap here this is Michael, in fact this is Josh Richardson out of Australia yeah, this is great. So they're right on each other's hips at the moment. Um, Radford's still holding that slender lead. But Richardson, uh, a youngster just at 19 years of age, a real talent in Australia. And so uh, this is one of the first times he's worn a wetsuit, much like Melissa Gorman said in recent years. So uh, the change, you know, he'll be feeling that slight inflexibility in the shoulders from not wearing one. And interesting to see how he, uh, how he feels throughout the race in the wetsuit. Philip Ryan just out to the back in the yellow cap traditionally decides not to wear the full sleeve wetsuit that just allows him to feel a little bit more flexibility feel a little bit freer and I just wonder with the Australians in the wetsuits for the first time at what point maybe they just do fatigue a little bit in them because they will feel a little bit restricted they'll feel like they sit a little bit higher on the water as we now see the first significant move coming from the Australian over Radford so Josh Richardson deciding that he wants to lead this race he wants to set the tone set the tempo and just in that bunch, uh, also in the red cap, is a late entry uh, in the elite field, Ben Campbell McDonald. He had a good swim in Wellington. Remember, he won the, uh, sorry, he swum the 88 kilometres across Lake Wakatupi last year, which was a fantastic effort. He's right tucked in the bunch as well. But Richardson over Radford at the moment with just uh, 500 metres into the swim. The great thing about Le Grand Swim here in Akarala, it is pretty much a straight swim out and a straight swim back. They've got three large marker boys they need to follow, they need to sight. As we now look back at Philip Ryan, who again in Wellington got off to a bit of a slow start. It appears to be the same here. The first time we now look at the red cap of Ben Campbell McDonald. And our first look at Melissa Gorman. There's white water in front of us. She's in touch with the men. She's doing a great job, Mark, hanging in there with the men's group. And we spoke to her earlier about the importance of a swimming stroke in an event such as this. Tell me, what is the most important thing when you're thinking about a stroke? Um, for me, I think the most important part is always the catch. It's where you get your force, you get your speed, and um, it's going to get you through the water pretty much. So I think no matter what race you're doing, whether it's a shorter race or a longer race, you've really just got to focus on making sure you catch that water right out the front and get a good catch through the, the pull phase of the stroke and just a nice, easy recovery. But you've got to be ready to catch onto that water at the start. So when you say catch, you mean you're reaching as far as you can with every stroke? Yeah, definitely. It's about making sure your hand goes into the water in the right position and it actually catches hold of the water. So some people tend to slip a little bit at the front of their stroke and you just got to make sure that your elbow's up high and you actually are getting a hold of the water. All right, well over these longer distances in these ocean swims, how easy is it to forget 
kind of the basics like that because a lot of things can be happening during a race. Yeah, definitely. It's very easy to forget, especially when you see other people flying past you and you want to try and catch up to them. There's a lot of things going through your mind. But I think it's important just to kind of take that step back and focus all about yourself and make sure that your own technique is good, your own stroke is where it's at, and speed comes secondary to a good technique, I think. Yeah, well said indeed. It is very much about what happens underneath the water, not necessarily what happens on top of the water. This is a wonderful men's race beginning to develop. All the big names are in there. Kane Radford in the green cap, Philip Ryan in the yellow cap, Michael Scheel out of Australia. We've also got Josh Richardson in there. And on, tailing on the back of that men's field, as we saw before, Mark, is Melissa Gorman. And at the moment, no sight of Charlotte Webby, the current series leader. Now we look back at her now, so unsure about how, how far she is back at the moment. But certainly, Melissa Gorman has made a great break on Charlotte Webby at the moment. Well, she's tough Charlotte Webby. She comes from a good surf life-saving background. She seems to be an athlete who thrives in a wetsuit, but that gap is now really opened up. You'd almost have to say close to 100 metres between herself and Melissa Gorman out of Australia as our lead swimmers approach the 1.4 kilometre mark halfway through round four of the State New Zealand Ocean Swim Series.